Okay, let's envision that this, and the angle is true, to the part at the very top that we call the belt. Okay, and this is very typically uh, uh, what you would be shooting for, something like this, and then, uh, because if you had a something that was like half of that, the steel that you're working with would not be able to hold that edge. It would not be, you know, so this is the way they're designed now. Now, with convex hones, when I started off with convex hones, and uh, this is one, uh, this is uh, made on a shaping plate that is uh, CNC machined uh, to have a, uh, this is the reverse of it, where I put this on a plate with an abrasive to shape this. And this is, in effect, like a wheel that is 24 feet. Okay, and then this way, it is about six feet, and the, the compounding of that leaves an elliptical surface, an elliptical crowning on here. And what, uh, initially, what I found the benefit when I started doing this, I found the benefit on a razor that was kind of curvy, that I just couldn't get it on the stone flat because the razor was bent. So do I sand the razor down, or do I have to chase it, okay? And then I found this because, because using that shorter curve this way, I was working in narrower angle and I found it easier for me. Okay, and then somewhere along the line, somebody turned up uh, uh, in, I think it was about 1860, a uh, German grinder's handbook where he talked about uh, honing and sharpening razors and he talked about using different diameters, not to get an edge like this, but to be working back in and to create a hollowing of the bevel itself, much like this razor has a hollow in it, where we're, we are literally gonna go in and we're gonna hollow the, uh, that bevel. And with magnification, later on we'll, we'll do one and we'll see it, and you can actually see where, where I'm gonna be taking this and you'll be able to see where I'm actually cutting away, if this is the bevel, I'm gonna be halfway into there, and then I'm on a short radius, so it's gonna be this radius going in the short part, and then the long radius is gonna to touch and get me very near to the tip. And I do finish, there are guys that are following that uh, German grinder's handbook to a T, and they are finishing on a flat stone on the final. Uh, I haven't got there yet, I may play with it, but I've found success and I'll show you how I finish. I use a strop that is shaped just like this with an abrasive that's, that's put on there and then I go to a, uh, a flat, uh, I'm like in a flat strop. Okay, so, yes, so when you're talking about when you're actually hollowing out the bevel, so using that vernacular, so in a way you're also, you're almost making the bevel itself a full belly hollow, correct? In the bevel? Uh, Almost because you're, it, you're yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's not really a full belly because it's a, it's like a compound hollow, okay. where where I have I have on the short radius I have you're working way back. So you can take a razor that you have sharpened by whatever method you use, and you've got it, and you've got it shaved. You can go back and you hollow that out, and then the idea is that so instead of having. Uh, Okay, a wear where you wear and then the, 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 the thickness of the actual edge that you're shaving with, it changes very, very quickly. But if you, if you create a hollow and a concavity, you have this narrower type thing. It may not be quite as sharp as, you know, something like this or something like this, but because you've got that shape to it, I find it durable, and you're literally, they tell me, I've talked to people, or I've listened to people, watch people's videos where they say that they can actually feel the bevel flexing. I, I'm not there yet, okay? So I'm just not there. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a licensed master barber in England who's, who's taken over this. He says he can feel it flex when he shaves, okay? Uh, the sensitivity of your face is pretty good, just like the sensitivity of your fingers is incredible, okay? Uh, if 
you Google the sensitivity of your fingers, you'll find that, you know, when people say they're honing and they're going by feel, it's real, you know, but you can't put a number to it, okay? So I'm gonna take this, I looked at this uh, first under the glass and it looks pretty good. It's got, it's got like a jaggy thing on there that really, really is um, something that I don't wanna really uh, put on my face. So I'm gonna get really, really aggressive with that one to the beginning. I'm gonna take, and uh, I'm gonna take, this is a water stone, this is a thousand grit, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work that, that, that corner out of there. And I'm gonna do it very similar. This, this is shaped exactly like this stone, and I'm, you know, I just, if I don't take that out of there, it'll cut you. Bill, are you, are you rocking that at all? I, I am. You're, you're kind of. I am, because, because this is curved this way as well as this way, so my stroke is, you know, very similar to, I guess, what they would call uh, like a rolling X stroke. Do you find by rocking it like that, do you get any geometry issues as a result? Um, define which well, one. Well, I'm saying, I mean, you know, doing the convex with that, and when you're going through the stones and stuff like that, you might have a tendency to, where you see a little bit more of it, because watching how you're doing that, that, that over time, a very small smile you create. Uh, actually, you're more likely to get yeah, a frown. frown. Yeah. You're more likely to get a frown, and because the, the part of the razor that gets the most action is the toe. So, so a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll work specifically on that heel, okay? Yeah. And, and a lot of times I do deliberately work a little bit towards a smile um, because... Because you know otherwise it would frown. Yeah, and, and I'm not so sure, you know, I don't place that much value in not having a perfectly straight edge if you laid it on, on something straight because I don't know that I can feel a shaving. You know. So essentially, you're you're honing one spot on that blade, and that that is moving as you're rocking it, rather than holding it flat on a stone and doing the whole entire blade at the same time. Yes, yes. You're, 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 you're working. Your point of contact is only a, a very small area. Yes. Fix to fix that yes. section. Right? Okay. So I I took that uh, hook or whatever out of there. I'm going to go to. Uh, uh, the soft arc, this is the soft side, I'm a double-sided arc and soft stone. This is a mixture of uh, about 25% ballastol and the balanced water and it stinks like hell, I can't stand the smell of this shit. Make a good aftershave for somebody, I think. And, and, <laughs> and what I'm... What, <laughs> have a cigar, David. It'll be all right. Okay. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do... I'm not going to do the complete hollowing of the bevel yet. I'm going to try and uh, get an apex edge on this stone here. Okay. Um, I actually be much faster doing this on on that synthetic, but uh, I think that those synthetics there, if you're not careful and you're trying to go fast, uh, you could put a gouge in there that you got to It's a pain in the ass to work out. So, Bill, watching it from this side as you're as you're doing your your edge leading strokes, I see that the the uh, the the arc is bending a little bit to your to your left. Are you balancing the pressure on the other side, or do you want to do that? I'm I'm usually a little bit heavier on the heel, okay? okay? And then I'm balancing, you know, with two with hands. Finger, right. okay. I, you know, I suppose, and this was something that why I kind of looked into this because you would see you would see the you know the, the people you know honing in the hand and that. that kind of stuff. It just I've never been able to do I, Yeah, I couldn't get it, you know. I've shaved with razors, the people sharpen that way, and they're fine. It's their style, it works. Um, do you 
rotate your stone 180 degrees to help maintain the, the geometry? Because it looks like you're favoring more the left side. I of do. The stone. I do. I'll I'll, okay. I'll I'll turn this That's around. Nice, but... um, and this, like any other natural stone, is not symmetrical in its performance. And this was was my thing with any natural stone. Uh, if you look at this side of this, this is not the same, you know, a couple inches away, okay? Whereas a synthetic stone has some sort of a science where this has been manufactured to be the same completely throughout. And I just know that, you know, you can look, I don't know what that red spots stuff, and I have no idea what it is. It's, you know, uh, but I do know that even though I have shaped this and finished this on a 15, I went for a progression on wet dry silicon carbide sandpaper to 1500 grit, okay? It'll still cut a deeper scratch in here than I necessarily want. <laughs> but um, I've gotten deep scratches out of the synthetic stones too. So do you check most of your bevels just based on the, on the loop, or do you do the um, you do the burr? Uh, since I'm, um, I've never really, when I sharpen knives, I do the burr, okay? If you are sharpening one side, I suppose you could get and feel a burr. I don't know with an alternating every time stroke, I don't know if you would ever feel a burr, okay? I do believe that, um, so when you're setting the bevel itself, you are doing an alternating stroke. Yes. Yeah, which is totally 180 degrees opposed to traditional honing. So that's why this is interesting. Um, I, you know, I suppose you could do that. And if I have an area that, I, you know, and I am going somewhat by feel, I feel that there's something on the toe here mm -hmm. that, is, that is a little, uh, gritty feel to it. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot you can do because what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely erase this bevel with that, that really curvy stone. I just want to get this to where I feel I've got it out to the edge. And then, I, and, and then I'm, going, I'm going back and forth a number of times because it's not that hard to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And Kyle did check this with my uh, with my uh, thing, and he confirmed that this bounces. <laughs> okay, um, I don't see any uh, hacks, chips, or anything in there. Um, now, when you're looking at it at that point right there, Bill, can you see? Can you tell it's it's concave? Um. I know that on this stone, I have not done the whole bevel. I'm okay. not sure. So you're only doing the back half of the bevel. This one, this one, I'm trying to get out towards the tip. You wanna, you wanna take a look at that thing, tell me what you see? The, the switch is on the top and if you flip it to the left, it turns on the LED light. Here, here you go. Oh, let me record that. <laughs> Sorry. You wouldn't have gotten it there, Skippy. The sharp edge is just a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate that. Um, you do some honing. Who else hones? Chris, you hone? Does anybody, does anybody use the thumb pad? Put your finger on there and feel the edge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember the first time I, I saw uh, Lynn Aber video do that. I thought, God, I'll never do that. I mean, I've done it for years with knives. Right. <laughs> okay, and I thought, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> you well, know? And a lot of people use the fingernail test, too. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That's right. and, and, and what I noticed right out of the gate is that by smoothing the edge out right now, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you're truly setting up, I mean, that's completely smooth all the way across, and it's uniform. I, I don't know that setting the bevel was a real, real necessarily a good term because 
because it's not like you said where you establish a shape and then continually refine. Was that the ring that came off of my finger? Awesome. I'm breaking stuff. No, I, I think it's a bottle. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's not fun. You might have to point it back in <laughs> So if you're setting a bevel, you're setting this and then you're going to refine that. Since I'm working on multiple curvatures and it, it is something that stays in flex all the time and it changes, and, and I'm going to do my final evaluation, and I'm going to see where I'm at now. This still is kind of bouncy on there. It's a little grabby, and if I take this, and this is a little toothy, this edge, I'm sure, because I'm sure I'm going to go like this, and if I do a little bit of lateral move, it just goes right in, a lot like a bread knife where uh, you have a serrated edge knife. And I'm going to do a, because it's a little bit, Quicker, I'm gonna now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I kind of called a back beveling, and that was a term that I picked up. It's not in the German grinder's handbook. I picked it up. I've used it because it was something I picked up years ago uh, on knives. And when I do knives, I use a rod guide system. So I'm gonna stay this time. I'm gonna stay pretty much perpendicular because this is the greatest curvature, and I will actually. This bevel will gain in size visually. I haven't measured if I had a microscope where we could take the pictures and do the Dr. Rack thing and put it on the TV. It'd be great. I just don't have all that. Um, Next year. <laughs> I mean, I have one of the, I have one of the, the, the USB microscopes. I just don't use it because it's like what I really like would like to have. Can't be both at the same time. Huh? Can't do both at the same time, can <laughs> I would like to have a uh, uh, binocular microscope. You know, I mean, they're like $1,500 or one I want. That's like, how am I going to ever explain that to the missus? Do you know how many, <laughs> do you have many really nice razors I could buy for $1,500? You, you, you tell her you got it on sale for $1,200. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you realize manuals right here, right? Someone right? right? so right? right? so right? do know that. No, you traded something to, nerd, to to Barbara Day. He's sending it to you in trade for something else. True. Well, we got to go buy Nurse Day's watch, right? So if you can buy a watch, <laughs> you can buy those glasses. I'm going to just buy another watch. Do they have a microscope store here? <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a lot of stuff off of this, and this is, you know, this is a 3,000 grit, and I'm pretty much going to go with this until I look in the glass and I have a uh, completely uniform where I've cut from it, the, the beginning of the bevel to the edge, and then, and like I said, I may go back and forth on this. I wonder how in the hell they sharpen this. I see some stuff in there. <laughs> Gold dava. You know, I've I, I've heard guys that you know say you buy twelve of these and you can maybe get to own nine of them. I've not had a single razor I have not been able to own. It might have taken me uh, quite a bit of time to do it, but I've never had a razor that I have not been able. To. And I didn't bring it with me. I should have brought that. Uh, W59, like the one Rich shaves with. That was, that is so, I took a picture, I think I put it on the floor, and it's so bent up and wacky. That one was a, a challenge to get sharp. Change it to the finer stone just because I feel a smoothness of what I'm getting. And uh, so I'm refining that, just taking some of the scratches out of there. I brought the codicil in case I needed to use the codicil. Now, what step would you use the codicil? I would prefer, if I was not on a time frame, to use 
uh, both arcs, then go to Cotical, cut in and back Bevel, and then come back to the black arc, and then ultimately I'm going to go finish somewhere. on a black arc or transit. I'm going to finish on a 12K. I'm actually going to finish on on, on uh, uh, Abrasive Pulse. Oh, okay. You'll see the difference on that. It's pretty amazing how from one step to the next, you can see a difference on okay. that test. Now, I've never been, you agree with me on the hanging hair test, I've never agreed no, with. Never There's the one guy who has the hanging tear, hair test down the HHT one, two, three, and he, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, that looks pretty scientific. I mean, uh, it was just something I couldn't do. To me, the, I like that, I actually like the resistance of the, of the packing tape because the tomato, even though it's a good, it's a good test, it also ruins a boatload of tomatoes. I, <laughs> and I found I couldn't eat that many tomatoes. <laughs> no, I just didn't always have a tomato around the house and I'd buy tomatoes specifically for that. And if they were sitting in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks, the skins change. So, uh, you and then, my packing pan too. And they, well, and they taste like that honing oil. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a difference in packing peanuts. There is a difference in packing peanuts. There's one that uh, I don't know what the composition of. I believe that one is polystyrene. It's very light. And because uh, I've got the packing peanuts, and it's like I take one that you go into that, and it like pops. Okay, and then I go into the other one, it just won't go into. So, but, uh, and. Well, you know, I had a big bag of these, and when I was packing, to run on packing peanuts. when I was packing up, the Cheetos will work in a pinch. <laughs> Cheetos, yes. When I was packing up, I'm looking for that bag, and I'm like, oh shit. And I called my wife at work, and she had that bag in a part of the garage. Said, well, it's over there near your tractor. I was going to throw it out. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> You know, this has been around here. That bag has been around here for 20 years, and now you're going to throw it out. They are how it You find the green ones were better than the pink ones or the white ones? Uh, <laughs> there will be. Are you are you having a contest be because of your hair colors? For packing <laughs> and peanuts. Are you going with amber or or KJ? <laughs> what was that? Hair color, amber or KJ? The green or the pink? <laughs> it's the green, man. <laughs> the difference between leprechaun poop and snow wind poop. <laughs> <laughs> no smurf peanuts here. He's gonna be, he'll be here for the letter. Okay, I have been working that toe because I'm feeling something in there, but I think that since. So now, are you going to put, you know, because obviously the, the most of the stones come flat, so if somebody wants to get in the convex homing, do you have a, kind of a methodology of how somebody can take one of their stones and turn it into a convex home? Uh, I probably would not have continued into this if the guy who has been the chief proponent, and I'm not doing a commercial here for him, right. uh, but uh, uh, he he has been the guy who kind of revived this. Who who owns the Superior Shape in Jacksonville? Oh, so he you can buy you can buy the shaping plate from okay. him. It's about a hundred bucks. Okay. He started making that shape when he started into it because he went he uh, at one time went to Europe because he sells a lot of European type things. And a guy from Tierra's Assar, the vice president or something, there says okay. says you guys own wrong. You know, they were talking tape because he was bitching to how crappy the TI t t razors were and how bendy they were and how hard they were. was telling him he wasn't? They told him he was not honing correctly, okay? Because their honing methods accommodate those inconsistencies in their manufacturing process. And then he found out the Germans said the same thing. And, you know, they, they had said, you know, well, uh, you know, our zip line's blown in the wind there. Yeah. Uh, and and Maybe uh, the they line. showed it to him, and he <laughs> was pursuing that because somebody that was honing razors at, at um, wherever would always take a stone, and they would, in the spirit of the craft of what they were doing, they would they would shape that hone manually. And, and 
I, I couldn't, I just didn't really think that that was something I wanted to do. So he, he made his first shaping plate. It took him, I think, about 40 hours of hard labor just to make, he went and got two granite tiles because he read how the amateur telescope makers would convex a piece of glass for the lens in there. Mm -hmm. And there's a, yeah, they actually do it the other day. Yeah, there's some way that they do that and they go through a procedure and he he did that with uh, with these uh, uh, marble tiles and that was that was how this rock was first shaped on that where he once he shaped that out he found very quickly that you had to put a piece of sandpaper on it because even though that was granite you put silicon carbide powder in there you're gonna wear everything down uh, so uh, he was at it and then he went through a whole bunch of things and and uh, the plate that I got he didn't announce what it was he says honing solution it's named the price and I knew what he had done okay he had had he had found somebody to machine a plate out with a CNC uh, machine and um, I know that for people in Europe because it's hard to sell things in Europe nowadays uh, he g gave away the, di the 3D digital file, so if somebody has a, uh, 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 a 3D printer or somebody has a C access to a CNC, they can make one of these things for themselves. Because he was not in the, he was not interested in selling plates. The guy wants to sell razors, and they beat the hell out of him. For how much is he selling? The plate is not ninety nine dollars. You have the, pl I have a plate. Do you? Paint the butt. Put sandpaper on it. You you use the the, the grit. Oh, I, is it, I put it I put sandpaper down first to get to an arc, and then I put the grit on top oh, of that. So oh, okay. Now right. these things I just use sandpaper on. Uh, they yeah, should. It's, it's just, I guess I, I can do blue or something. Right? It's just What's that? Of, it's just a pain in the butt to do. Was it was it was it a wet dry? Yeah, it's just, it, it eventually always comes up, and it's just a pain mm. in the butt. Um, I mean, I wet it underneath, or sometimes I'll put a paper towel, wet side. paper towel on there to kind of get some clingage on there. But you, you mentioned one of the things that uh, early on clingage. Oh, I have a lot of bent board razors. Yes, but I also have a lot of very thin cuticles that are right. you know one inch or, or so, and you can you know it's not a convex home, but it's very close to one. When yeah. you get very narrow, uh, you can do a lot with that, and, and they're cheap. You know, so that's the first one you get your hand on. It's a little tiny, big thing. Right. And then you get the remember we yeah. bump up those big ones. And yeah. You can't do a lot of work razors with no. a big. And that's why. This, well, that's why this was so interesting for me because it changes. It, you know, it changes the whole game. Yeah. I'm, really I'm gonna get. Uh, I think I have uh, some synthetic. Uh, well, I've got, well, I've, got my shaft, well, I've got my shaft ones all the way through 30,000. Yeah, and then I've got my, to, well, I already have, but I'm thinking it's about actually convexing my pocket. Yeah, it's, you see it done. Um, I'm curious to see, you, but you're, you're perpendicular on that one, right? You're, you're not doing any angle. Uh, no, if I angle this way, it changes the whole it, thing, it, right? I'm doing more into the back double because I'm going on to the steeper angle if I do this, okay? If I do this, I'm staying totally out, out, you know, more towards the tip. And I'm actually... Is uh, there a time that you do angle on purpose, or...? Yeah, if I want to, like, work, work a specific area. It's, it, you know, it's like anything else with... I've never really invested the time to learn to hone flat. I never really do it, did it because I never really got successful at it. But a lot of the same things that I read about in the descriptions of what you do, you do here. Okay, so I don't see the actions that you are imparting in terms of your skill to be that much different. And the advantage for for me that I found was that I found. Once I went to a compounded bevel, I found out that the shaving performance was, was okay. Can you do that? Can you do it without having on the thing? Just sort of do it over here for the set. Here's the 
Go get the Hello Kitty band-aids. That is so weird. I noticed it's band-aids. I'm getting a little bit of a poke in there, okay? And a little bit, the more that you do this, the more work you need to do. If you could get that to where it just, just kind of goes straight in, okay, that's what you're after. I'm pretty good on this. I'm satisfied with what I got right here on this. And then I'm gonna go to, if I can find it. I'm curious, can I look at just the spine? I don't, I mean, cause I can, I'm curious where you're hitting on the spine. Uh, oh, it's, it's one thing to hit, cause I understand right. that you hit different areas. I can't see Scott, man. Pretty blind. Yeah, I can't see anything. Take your glasses off and just like look through the bird. I can't, yeah, I can't see with the window without anything. It's like dark as hell in here. Yeah, you're hitting way different on the spine. It's like the spine's not even there. Exactly. That's what I noticed on the first part of it. I'm blind to that. It's like the geometry is entirely uh, different. <laughs> I have a third face. Oops. Sit down, Chris. No, I'm uh, no, sitting hurt. Well, yeah, because he walked for 18 miles yesterday. He's still stretching his legs out. So mostly, I'm I'm kind of going by feel on this, and I'm I'm going to the then what's a 12k Superstone with just water. So I get this where I'm just not feeling any resistance in there. No, no little, stone is everything. This is the men with 12K. Okay. And if I look at this, what I am looking for at this point, I'm looking to see a polish work out towards the edge. You're not, you're not at the point now where you want to speak yet, or are you? I'm not at the point where I want to speak. I don't find that this will squeak. Oh, really? When you, when you do the conduct? Yeah. Like that? And this, this is, I. I can see some double things going on in there, but I know that I'm out on the edge on this. Where I'm working, I got a little bit more polishing to do, and then I'm gonna hit the straps. And, and for me, it's a pretty quick system. I, did you take this from zero? Is this from, is that razor from this zero? Was, this was untouched. I, I mean, I cleaned the, the oil off of here, and that that was pretty much it. So when I tested it on the styrofoam, it takes a big dent into styrofoam instead of cutting it. Right. Well, I want to, once it gets done, I want to do that. Well, that can shake and bolt off. I want to do the shape. And, and, I, and I, have, I have other ones here. If anybody wants to do this for your hands, because me doing this for me doesn't mean anything. You know, um, Chris, you have one of these. You can use the stones here. If, if you want, and, and Terry Cruz then, plays the flute. Then you can decide if you want to pursue the different the different radius. What do you say? What do you say? Terry Cruz plays the flute. <laughs> start honing. Yeah. 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 That, that should be prohibited. Honing and drinking. I would usually have to go. All these damn Midwest people who came out here and brought the rain. Yes. So this is where you're working more on that section behind the edge? Uh, this is out on the edge. So you're, you're, you're polishing the edge, right? I'm polishing the edge. Okay. Now, could you, so that's on an, you said an inch 12 k Yeah. So that, that could be on a polished black arc, it would be the same. Yes. Okay. Or a trans arc, which is the same. So. <laughs> Have to sort of take my finishing stone and just uh, convex one side of it, keep the other side flat. Just to do the conversion. Mm -hmm. You know what the shave that you would have had the blade change long ago? Oh, you know the shave went, went there. Yeah, yeah. He went there. <laughs> you know the shave that's already, right? Right. They're already I'm ground ready to roll. <laughs> Maybe this would solve Bowers. your installing problem. Yeah. <laughs> what I, you know what I've noticed recently, though, is, is my Shiva, like maybe that's the, the cheap Chinese one, though, but I've been having, 
What do you mean, the kai? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 But I kind of knew what he did. So, I thought it was just a bad weather or something. But now it's like, yeah, let's just pop it right here. Yeah. That one that you said. Uh, yeah. yeah. so you haven't, you haven't, yeah. you haven't. Yeah. That was not. You haven't started. Beautiful. I can go. So if you were to do that, that you know, what you heard of the bug that I'm going to test. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tree topping. Are they done? Yeah. It's, it's, it's tree topping at half. I've never had a tree topping. This isn't even strawberry. Okay, so. Wow. Yeah. 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 Y
let people do the stones, but as far as the, the, the finishing, finishing, the finishing the blouses and the straw, because you could probably make those fairly inexpensively and put a little bit of a market for people to buy them. I know I would because it's just easy. I mean, here's yeah, here's you'll buy anything. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Here, here's my issue with that. Sure. I, okay. Um, since I have been one of the earlier adopters and proponents of this, and I've made videos on it, and I've taken beatings on this, I'm doing this because it's what I do and what I love, okay? If, if I get into a business, it, there's always that possibility of uh, uh, somebody saying, well, you're doing it for the money. No, dude, you know, because, because world-famous owners have come after me. <laughs> okay, and they hone razors for a living. Yeah, okay, I know, I know exactly. Uh, GS6 gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 he comes after me. Okay, and he hones razors for a living. He takes money. I'm doing this as a hobby, and I'm wanting, wanting to share what well, I do. The thing is, and, the, and Chris and I, and anybody else who owns owns the tradition. Well, the it, it intrigues me looking at it because I'm confused. You know, one of the things that confuses me is the geometry. The geometry is actually 100% accurate all the way through. It's still geometry. Mm -hmm. The difference is, because I've made, I take, I took a gold dollar and made it exactly what the convex is doing. All I've done right is, there. instead of getting a bevel angle that is, where does a traditional one fall? Gold dollars fall like at 24. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, I've taken it down to where when you hold the point on the straight, uh, yeah. flat, down about 14. Right. And you're like, oh, please don't slice, please don't slice. Exactly. Yeah. And it feels entirely different. So the whole razor, is mm -hmm. now your convex yeah. right. edge. The whole damn thing is that right. Right. Yep. right, right, right. All totally. you're doing is achieving that that narrow, narrow, narrow bevel. Exactly. Using the big tools. Much e and much quicker and much easier, yeah. Uh, so you're not doing anything different. It's still geometry. And that's right. why I right. want to look at the spine. The edge is the edge is the edge. Right. It's where you're hitting that spine. Mm -hmm. Because like we were talking about yesterday, you you were talking, you know, you stamp out the geometry of the of the razor. You got to get a certain geometry. The tools you use from there are are just what you're getting. At. So it's yep. not a, neither one of you are wrong. Neither right. One of you are right. It's still a geometry. I'm issue. more right though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so when's the last time you should? I'm just curious razor. about your your I'm straw. I'm just more right. Yeah, yes, you can well. see that. No, I'm this one. Yes. What about the it's, on, it's, it's on the plate. So, so, so it's curvy this way. It's more curvy. So you can see the curve this way a lot easier than you can see. On the strop too? On the other strop? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you can look at the stuff. You can put your hands in. You can try it. Well, I, I got to say, it's when, when I just, before you went to the, the higher numbers, just going across, it was tree topping at a half an inch and then on the skin. Well, and, and think to, I have a, I bought, I, just recently, because we were going to do a demo thing here, I bought one of the, it's an art combo. Yeah, bought from called Pitbox. Straight, sharp, whoever the guy is that you just mentioned. Right. I bought one of those things. Spear Shave. Spear Shave. I bought one of his half and half art things, right? And I took uh, one of my razors I, I normally use and I did. And it was pleasant enough, but like it, it wasn't, it, it hurt the but it, was, it didn't go the razor doing it, and it, it actually did elevate it. Right. But going from that to flat balsa uh, damaged it or changed it. Right. Yeah. Well, see, that's what's interesting about it. So, I, so is this where you're going to do Because that's where it said you can do, you can go back to flat, and I don't understand that. Hey, first, buddy. And so what? And so you just mount that on the. I bought these. I bought this one from uh, Chef's Knives to go. Where well, the what white comes from. What I'm curious about. I want to make a, something that's convex and glass. Uh, uh, not I. Somebody's <laughs> doing that. Is that your phone going? <laughs> Elephants here for you, Chad. <laughs> I want to get get some. Uh, Where's that? It's a lapping film. I think it's the engineering. Oh. Lapping, oh. lapping film. Yeah, the first one. Chris, that, that's, a, that, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Somebody no, somebody's drilling. Now. Somebody's drilling. Because I've made, I've made, made a number of straps like this. Exactly. One, one thing. thing. One glass thing. Like because your lessons. Yeah, what I found was yeah. I was in a hanging strop, I would roll the edge. 
Because I can get to where this is, and then I do my hang and that's what I'm thinking. I don't drop that well at all. There's an art in there that I was completely missing. Hey, Bill, so you're 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 almost done, right? I'm pretty much done. Okay, so just say what you're doing real quick, and I'm going to kill the... Okay, so we are at the point where the last step is is a uh, roux skin. There's nothing on this. It oh, but you do, uh, you do, you do, your final strop you do on a flat. Yes. Okay. 